Hey people, it is Sunday, August the 21st. The time is 1.21 in the afternoon. It's currently 23 degrees Celsius, but feeling much warmer with this very sticky humidity in the air, more like 30 degrees or so. And I'm here on Bloor Street, crossing from Bloor Street East to Bloor Street West, which changes right here at Young Street. There's a look south down Young. And I just completed a walk along Young Street, starting from Adelaide in the south, all the way up here to Bloor, as part of Open Streets TO, which is where they completely block off a couple of major downtown streets to car traffic and turn them into wide open pedestrian thoroughfares and also cyclists as well. And it runs for four hours from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., which seems dreadfully short in my opinion, but I suppose it's better than nothing. So as I mentioned, the section of Young Street that is closed is closed between Queen and Bloor. And Bloor Street is closed, I believe, from Church all the way to Christie Street. But I started it at Young instead of at Church because there is very loud music playing down closer to Church. <laughs> so I thought I would avoid the Muzak and potential copyright claim. So now we're just walking through the Mink Mile. So this closed portion will take us all the way through Koreatown and to Christie Pitts Park. We'll also walk through the Annex on the way. So this is where all of not all of, but many of Toronto's luxury shopping can be found here in the Bloor Yorkville neighborhood. And there is rain in the forecast. I managed to avoid getting rained on too much on my walk along Young Street, but I might not be so lucky this time because I can feel what was a very, very light sort of sputtering of raindrops starting to get a bit heavier now. I do have my umbrella with me so I might open that up. It's going to become a rain walk. Here's Bay Street. And you can see how hard it's raining right now. Not very hard yet. Just when you think it can go, someone decides to park their car right in front of you. Let's look south down Bay. And now I'll head back out onto the street again. And as far as I can remember, I've never before recorded a video walking along Bloor Street during open streets. I have done one of Young Street several years ago.
I think once we get into the annex neighborhood, it'll probably get a lot busier in terms of pedestrians on the street. It's a very busy strip on a weekend. In normal times, the sidewalks are often packed. just a very light drizzle. So I have to make sure that I don't get a drop landing directly on the lens of my camera here. Keep an eye out for that. And even though they close streets for various events and parades and festivals, you know, quite often throughout the, the the warm weather months of the year, it's still a bit of a novelty when such a long stretch of a major downtown street is closed down for several hours. Toronto is quite resistant to that sort of thing. Most street festivals that do close down major streets might run for five or six blocks or so, and usually that's the the extent of it, whereas this runs for a good couple of kilometers, as far as I can tell, both on Young and on Bloor. Crossing Queen's Park and Avenue Road. It's always such a force of habit to just go onto the sidewalk. I have to remind myself when I cross an intersection. I don't have to do that. And here's the Royal Ontario Museum. And the rain has stopped. Although, as 
some people still have their umbrellas up. <laughs> We're walking through the University of Toronto portion of Bloor Street. I recently did a live stream walking along a very long stretch of Bloor Street West, beginning at Jane Street at the western end of Bloor West Village and continuing all the way to Young and then I decided to head south on Young all the way to Dundas Square and that took over three hours. It's like my longest ever live stream. It's like we have a, a maze here for the kids. <laughs> well, I suppose the adults as well <laughs> try their luck. Some high school students with their robot. <laughs> Looks like it's a basketball playing robot. <laughs> Here's another maze, although without walls, it's not really a maze in my opinion, but... <laughs> this is start. So you start, you go in here, and you see if you can get it. Just basically just follow the pathways is really... The challenge of this one. Zoom it as Something like that gives me all the vision, you know. Just remind me, okay. Money's actually not bad. Money's not bad. It gives you all the vision. Yeah, so this is definitely the first time I've ever walked right down the middle of this part of Blue Street. <laughs> Crossing St. George, looking down into the U of T campus. Yeah, we should get a look at the CN Tower. Well, you can see the top of it anyway.
Curious to see who would still decide to use the bike lanes instead of riding their bicycle along the pedestrianized part of the street. I suppose there's plenty of room here, but. I think I'd still use the bike lanes if I was cycling along here. I'd only veer out onto the street when there was a slow cyclist in front of me and I didn't have room to pass in the bike lane as they are rather narrow here. make good time walking without having to contend with slow walkers in front of you on the sidewalks. And here's Spadina, Avenue to the south and Road to the north. Ah, looks like I'm not going to make it. I could have ran, but I'm already sweaty enough as it is. The humidity is really, really thick and soupy. Of course, heavy traffic now that many of the side streets are blocked to traffic, the more minor side streets. There's the CN Tower. No trees to block it this time. We're about to come into the Annex neighborhood and it does appear as if there's more human density on the street up ahead. Oh, 
Well, this area is very popular with students from the University of Toronto. I think I hear some music up ahead. And this is live music here. This rarely poses a <laughs> concern for copyright claims, although this is not live. The backing track is definitely something that could cause a copyright claim, so I'm just going to talk over that as I move past the area. This has been a relatively <laughs> Muzak-free walk so far. <laughs> and there's the Victory Cafe. That used to be located in Mervish Village, which is being redeveloped as part of the massive Honest Ed's residential complex up ahead. There's the famous Lee's Palace, live music venue. Here's Albany Avenue. I believe this is the street that Jane Jacobs lived on for decades, right up until she passed away. I think her house is number 69, 69 Albany. And she was a famous urbanist, by the way. Famous author of urban issues. And here's Bathurst Street. So this is where we'll be leaving the annex. And making our way into Koreatown. Once 
again, lots of traffic. Streetcar is heading into Bathurst Station, subway station. Here's where Honest Ed's used to be. Uh, these are new rental apartments here. People often mistake them for condos and complain. <laughs> Too many condos and that sort of thing. But they can't complain about those. Condos they are not. And I mentioned the victory used to be in Mervish Village. Well, this is where Mervish Village used to be, but it will be coming back in a new form. And I believe that stretch of Markham Street will be pedestrianized this time, whereas it was not before. Here's Koreatown. There's another fire truck. I saw one of these parked on the Young Street portion of Open Streets. They let you go inside and check it out and sit in the driver's seat. Some lemonade for sale. <laughs> lemonade and cake pops. There's a look. Be neat. Is it alright if I take a seat there? Yeah? Go ahead. Alright, thanks. Alright, let's see if I can do this with one hand. <laughs> Try to have my pockets full of stuff. So it's a bit of a challenge getting up here. Alright, so here we are, sitting in a fire truck. Look at that. I kind of wanted to do it on Young Street, but someone else was always sitting in the seat with another person waiting. So there we go. A view from a Toronto fire truck. Right? I thought one guy did it so 
<laughs> I had some bulky things in my pocket, so lifting my leg up high enough to get into the truck was <laughs> a bit of a challenge. Kind of had to pull myself with my free hand. Oh, feeling more raindrops again. Famous poop cafe. to karaoke and internet lounges. This is the neighborhood for you. <laughs> I actually sell them. I have a store right there. Parking out my I do think it's fine. But I can see Christie Street right up ahead and this is where open streets comes to an end here along Bloor Street West. But Bloor Street of course continues on and on and on. And on and on and on. We could walk for another couple of hours through a fairly urban built up strip of stores and restaurants with a couple of gaps here and there, mostly due to parks, such as right here where Christy Pitts Park is, and High Park is further up. So I'm going to wrap it up here. I hope you enjoyed. The walk along Bloor Street West for Open Streets Toronto. We started at Young and made our way all the way over here to Christie, passing through the Mink Mile, the U of T area, the Annex, and Koreatown. So leave a comment below. Let me know your thoughts. And I also got to sit in a City of Toronto fire truck. Toronto Fire Department truck. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> So yes, leave your thoughts below as I mentioned, and be sure to like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already, of course. And also make sure you hit that notification bell, that way you won't miss any of my videos. And if you'd like to support the channel, there are links in the description where you can do so via PayPal, as well as via my merch store and the recently enabled Super Thanks button right down below. And you can also find me on Instagram under KContinuum. So thanks for watching, and be sure to keep checking back because as always, I will continue.